All right. This is something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And it took an old hockey friend of mine coming out talking about it to more or less convince me to talk about the dealings with my mental health and everything I've dealt with since my traumatic brain injury uh, Memorial Day 2001 um, people that know me hi um, people that don't know me uh, my name is Ryan Hughes um, born and raised in st. Louis I've always been a happy fun going person um, was always like that in high school I was never a fighter never wanted to start shit for my language but I played hockey from 12 years old and I'm 39 now um, I think that was the only time ever in high school or anything like that that I would ever get a little rough but that's the nature of the beast with hockey um everybody that knew me in high school for what i can remember um i've always been a fun outgoing person um memorial day 2001 oh backtrack that went to marine corps uh september of 2000 shortly after graduating high school graduated boot camp everything was good um completed school of infantry everything was good with that um memorial day 2001 i flew home to surprise childhood friend jr for his uh graduation and this is shortly after finishing CAX out in 29 Palms where I was deprived of sleep, etc. Um, I don't remember anything happened of the accident, but I remember buddy Mike Snodgrass uh, tapping me, waking me up, saying, Hughes, let's go. Um, fast forward roughly... I think three and a half weeks later, uh, I wake up in the hospital. Um, I was put in a medically induced coma two, two and a half weeks. Um, I was ejected out of a pickup truck at 40 mile an hour, landed on my head, um, was air evac to a hospital. Um, my mom didn't take pictures of it which I don't blame her, but they said it looked like I had a football on the corner of my head um, due to just all the pressure built up. And anyways, um, after getting out of the hospital, I had to do a lot of uh, rehab due to suffering really bad atrophy and everything that happened to the left side of my body not being able to use it even after getting out of the hospital and stuff um that's where i can first remember having extreme anger and agitation issues where I was in rehab in South County, or no, in South County, it was Arnold. And they wouldn't let me leave to go down to the Marine Corps recruiter 
to go talk with somebody and be with somebody I felt comfortable being around. And I remember briefly blowing up and telling everybody to go F themselves. And I went down to the Marine Corps recruiter's office and sitting there talking with him. Then shortly after that, a person from the rehab came down and tried to get me to leave and I wouldn't leave and they were going to have to call the cops in order to get me to come with them and my recruiter specifically suggested that I go with them so I wouldn't get in any trouble um that was the first instance um the, a lot of the instances after that, I don't recall, but my mom, I made her life a living hell. Um, just verbally abusive to everyone that was close to me. And it's like, I, I felt like I have no control over it um I guess that was towards the end of 01 I was still in the Marine Corps working up at the INI station um doing random stuff up there and I think it was um September of or December of 02 I was medically retired due to my head injury um then I think it was February or April I moved out to Wilmington North Carolina and to be with my sister brother-in-law and my new nephew that was recently born chase and the next hell i guess i'd say until 2010 i don't recall ever having any issues with the Anger, depression, anxiety, um, suicidal thoughts, any of that, um, until I recently was at a, speaking with a VA psychiatrist, and he told me he'd met me before, and I kind of looked at him dumbfounded and told him, I haven't been to the VA since I was getting processed out of the Marine Corps and he type, type, type. He told me that in July of 03, a couple months after I moved to Wilmington, I met him up in New Bern, North Carolina, and I was complaining about everything I previously spoke about with my anger uh, depression, anxiety, extreme irritability, and suicidal thoughts. And that that blew my mind because I never thought it was bothering me um, after all these years. But I've... Uh, now I think about after all those years, I was a emotionless I, I I never showed emotion really if things were bothering me I nobody nobody's that's known me in Wilmington until recently had no idea I was suffering with all this stuff um I guess I had a really good way of hiding it except for the people that were closest to me, which I, I just, I eviscerated people 
was spitting just pure venom at them when knowingly they didn't deserve that. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I truly, the f from my knock on my head, most of my past and childhood, etc., I have no memory of. Um, it's bits and pieces will pop up and uh, just out of the random. Um, it was never, it was just never a, never a thought that I was like this in the in the previous years until um, I guess it was 2000, 2012 I moved back to Wilmington with my wife and my child that I don't even think he was a year, not less than a year old. And that's when I can truly start remembering when it started to get bad. Um, I don't, they say stress, extreme stress will make TBI symptoms become very prominent in people's lives I've read and crap. the first bad um, episode I can remember was the house that I moved back and we were renting and my wife, my mother-in-law, my son were in the bathroom and I think they were giving him a bath or something. And to this day, I cannot remember what was said or whatever what caused this. But I was obviously so bothered by whatever she said to me but I went into my room I grabbed my 9 mil I remember going into the bathroom and racking it and putting it up to my head and telling her to pull the fucking trigger if I was that bad of a person, if I was that terrible of a father, I don't know what caused that episode to happen, but I remember my mother-in-law ripping the gun out of my hand and either slapping me or more or less knocking me back into fucking reality. Um, I, I just, I remember literally breaking down crying and right there, I, that should have been the biggest red flag for me to seek treatment in the higher than taking a fucking pill. And, but, uh, so much to throw out there um over the I'm trying to put all this in one thing um that's where it, I think really the fuel on the fire I don't know if it was I've been the provider, the breadwinner, something that I take pride in doing. Um, I never wanted her to work. I wanted her to be home with the kids all times. 
so she didn't have to miss any of that. I didn't want her to work. If she wanted to work, I didn't have a problem with that. But I, I was about a year and a half into working with um, Cisco Foods, which that job blessed me with a lot, a lot of things. It helped me buy multiple houses and provide with my wife and kids with the best things I could, I can think of. Um, but also the stress of that, then the stress of coming home and just being literally a zombie dead from work and any type of stress would cause me to snap and anybody that has ever dealt with this they they will understand you're, you're basically 24 7 you're a ticking time bomb it's like I'm either happy, sad, or seeing red. Um, hell. Um, the first time I pondered killing myself, um, I literally... I had a, a bottle of acetophetamine and I had a bottle of Sambuca, which anybody that knows me in Wilmington from the bar days, that was my, my liquor of choice. And some people think it's disgusting. I think it's delicious. Um, I, after a very stressful day of work, I, literally drove my car into the parking lot I'm pretty sure it was at, at the battleship and this is still daytime and I literally put in my sun visor of my car um, and I had every intention of sitting there and swallowing pills and drowning it with the alcohol and just and people will tell you oh you don't want to do that you don't want to do that when the frontal portion of my brain was severely damaged and I I, there's, it's just time. I, I have no control. I, I, it's like you basically go to another place and then when you're done with your episode, you come to and, and you don't realize the damage you've done or are continuing to do. I literally would see red on somebody daily. Um, it, it's a it's a nightmare. I wouldn't work. I wouldn't wish the stuff I've had to deal with over the years on my worst enemy. I used to always say I would I would cut a hand off if I would never have to deal with any of the symptoms that I've dealt with over these years. I've I've tried every antidepressant I've at least a dozen different antidepressants and there's only one that worked and that was Prozac and I'll come back to that here in a minute but every week with Cisco I was grateful like I said for the money made home life worse and worse and worse for my wife and kids nobody and family let me get that straight
straight. Um, friends, everything. I've burned. I've ruined friendships. Over shit. I couldn't tell you. I have no recollection now that and until some people have come forward and talked to me about it that I all I can do now is I can apologize and but years and years um, of the antidepressants nothing working until I started taking Adderall Adderall to quote uh, a good friend that has helped me over the years, uh, Mike Aroni was my happy pill. Um, it was a mood stabilizer and it, it just helped me focus because I would ding, 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 ding. I'm all over the place. Um, Adderall, literally, I was happy as can be if I was on it. Um, I can't take it 24 seven. I have to sleep and anybody that knows it's basically cocaine and a pill. I've never done Coke, but it is an awesome feeling when I'm on it. Um, if, if I was having a, it didn't take much to have a bad day at work, something go wrong and the stress of me being late or causing me to be late somewhere drove me over the edge faster than anything I'm when it comes to the time wise I'm a perfectionist wise if you're early you're on time you're on time you're late and if you're late don't even fucking show up but I would have freak out sessions and Mike would take your fucking happy pill you're you're you need you need to chill out and I was prescribed 60 milligrams I started at 15 didn't last long enough so I was up to 30 milligrams twice a day so anybody that knows it's ever worked in food um, you work 12 14 16 hour days that's a everyday day of life you start work at 1 2 3 at the late like 4 o'clock in the morning um, it's it's a tough job. Um, it is demanding and it caused a lot of rifts in families, that's for sure. But for years, I probably averaged three to at the most five, five being generous, five and a half hours of sleep a night. And that's nine years. Um, that'll take a toll on you too. Um, it, I mean, I, I was always tired and irritated almost every day when I'd get home. Um, there was rare occasions that I would be happy coming home from work. It was a rare occasion, but, but that job caused me to sit in a dark parking lot. Same thing. I would always put my uh, windshield visor up. Um, my windows in my car have always been a dark tint, so you really can't see inside my car. So nobody could see if there was a body in there, period. Um, numerous times where stress feeling not good enough for people that I took my Glock and either stuck it in my mouth stuck it in my head stuck it up to my head or stuck it right here center mass and would just tap the trigger. A little bit of more pressure. 
and like a buddy of mine here recently basically it was almost the same thing just sit there and tap 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 and was I don't know not hope I, I don't know what to say but if there was enough pressure to that trigger I mean I was so many occasions just just tired of life but every time it's just thinking my kid at the time until my daughter was born a couple of years later I just I couldn't think of them being without a father but also I hated the way I was acting towards just getting irritated and screaming at my wife, my mother, my friends. I was tired of dealing with that that demon inside. Um, the Adderall kept me pretty even keel, so to speak, but the moment it would wear off is I I use the term it's like the movie Venom Eddie Brock that's Ryan then my Venom inside whenever I would get stressed and irritated he would come out and just eviscerate people. I mean, the most terrible shit I've said to my wife, my mother, towards family members, like I said, and, and friends and shit like that. I just, it's fucking terrible. Um, telling somebody that they're the worst fucking thing that's ever happened to them and that you don't love them, you loathe them. And the worst thing you ever did was meeting them that day and it just, that's PG shit. The stuff that I would say. Um, but once again, uh, it's just people with in depression and you it's a, it, you have no idea. I mean, I, I guess, like I said, I go, I was really good at putting on a very, I don't know, happy facade where people had no idea. But inside closed doors, I was, I, like, I would either be happy or a, a monster um I so many nights where I think about this shit and it just it drives me nuts how many nights where I would tell her that my wife that I was going to bed because I had because I would have three days a week a, like a two o'clock start in the morning and I would be upstairs breaking down just either crying uncontrollably masking it with crying into a shirt fucking pillow but then be sitting in my closet holding my gun contemplating just fucking ending it and 
I just, oh, how many times, I, in the past three years, I have either, in the, between sitting in the car, in the closet, or where they were away, either shooting myself, I've cutting my wrist, hanging myself, or every antidepressant I've ever taken, I've looked up how many pills they would take to do the fucking job. Um, I, in the past couple of years, it, before it would be, I don't know, maybe a once a year, maybe two times a year type of thing where it was becoming probably close to a dozen a year probably from 2017 on. Um, I, I, I'm just tired of fighting this demon. I mean, it, he's dead now. Um, May of this year, um, that's it, hold on, before I get to that. Out of all the antidepressants I've been on um, over the years, I can't remember them all, but out of the top, in the last couple of years, Three of the five SSRI antidepressants that I've been taking are the highest, you have the highest probability of committing suicide, a homicidal episode, violent episode, including the one I was recently on and where I had a, a very bad episode I have no memory of. Um, Prozac, fluoxetine. What was it? You have a 10 time, 10.9 times more likely to commit a violent you have a violent episode to commit suicide or have a homicidal um, episode. Um, it was fluoxetine, fluvoxamine, which is like an 8.5 type, and venlafaxine or shit, something like that. It's like an 8.3 times more likelihood to have a violent episode. Um, and I believe sertaline was the last one. So that'd be four out of the top five. Um, and I recent out of all of those Prozac, I was recently prescribed in Jan, I believe either December or January, either of 2020, 2021 beginning. And also, I'm also taking between 60, 90, 120 milligrams of Adderall a day. Um, it wasn't until I had a, a violent episode with the Prozac and the first time I drank while being on it that I know my stepdad, um, my mom called me and asked if I was taking Prozac and Adderall at the same time. I said, yes. 
those two are a deadly combination um, that can cause violent outbursts and serotonin overdose where there is a lot of cases of people dying from taking those two and the fact that I was taking one and a half to sometimes two to two and a half my daily dose depending on my workload and what I had after work with family and stuff like that um, I'm shocked that didn't kill me um, but May of this year, I remember coming home and an argument ensued about something. And I remember going outside and watering my grass and started drinking and I remember my mom just flew into town and she, I was outside watering the grass and drinking a beer and I remember her coming out of the door saying hey and I remember looking up and saying what the fuck are you doing here you shouldn't be here this is not a good time. Next thing you know, I'm waking up being processed into jail for something I, I have no recollection of doing. Anyways, after getting out of that, I had a couple veteran friends reach out to me, ask me what the hell is going on. I told them. They asked me, let me ask you a couple questions. Shoot, were you on a new antidepressant? Yes. Were you drinking high alcohol content or liquor or beer? Both. Did you black out? Yes. Both of them both told me the first time they drank when they were on Prozac. The one guy's exact words is I wanted to kill everything and everyone in my house. So that stuck out as a red flag. So the next day I called my doctor and told her about what happened. This is with her. I've been seeing her for a couple of years. She's known all about my anger, anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts and I guess slash attempts. And I told her what happened. Her exact response was her literally stammering, going, uh, 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 this is over my head. Uh, uh, I can no longer be your provider. We'll be in contact with new provider. Click. That didn't sit too well. So that's when I started researching like violence with antidepressants or with medications, etc. And that's when I found all the studies and talking about how certain medications are linked to violent events. I've never been a violent person. I, I've been a very, I've been a verbally abusive 
person and I'm not going to blame everything on the head injury, but I was never like this before. Um, I, like I said I was always a happy, fun going person. Um, but something about with those actions that night didn't, didn't sit well with me. Um, So I looked into it. I contacted an, an attorney and I have a medical negligence lawsuit in the process right now. But still, then I, I just wanted everything that I've been dealing with and people that are quietly dealing with, I want, I just, I, I either wanted to go away forever or find something that would fix all this nightmare symptoms that I've been dealing with over the years. Um, the first time I heard about the SGB shot was on Joe Rogan's podcast with Dakota Meyer. And if people don't know who Dakota Meyer is, he's a, a Medal of Honor recipient. He's a United States Marine Corps sniper. Um, and in Afghanistan, his whole team, including his Marine Corps brothers and all of his Afghani counterpiles were all killed and he was the only one to survive and the PTSD from him came back and was a lot of the stuff that I dealt with from my head injury and he talked about this shot that he got up in Annapolis, Maryland um, the doctor's name is Dr. Sean Malvaney um, he's a Navy SEAL um, corpsman and he talked about suicide and everything then once he got the shot it it was like a thousand pound weight lifted off his shoulders um I wish the day I heard that podcast, I wish I could rewind time. I wish more than anything I could, but I didn't. The way I've had so many people ask me, like, why didn't you go to the VA for any of this type stuff? Why didn't you kind of reach out? I'm a workaholic. Anybody that knows me, I, if, if I'm not I, I, I like to work. I don't have a problem with working a lot. I like money. I like having fun toys, etc. But the way I looked at it, if I've got to lose a day and go to a doctor, that means I'm losing 250 to $500 a day missing work. So I never, I never, I never sought help part of me I was maybe denying that I really had an issue I I guess I would just after it I would have a a screaming episode which I think back screaming at why family members literally being out in the front yard playing catch with my son and him throwing a ball not to me, like missing me and me literally just getting so pissed off, not screaming, but I'd almost say it was like belittling and I'm basically I being out there like, why the hell am I even out here if you can't even get me the damn ball? I mean, just it's 
I think about this now and it kills me to think that I would ever not be encouraging towards my boy for anything. But this was probably like, probably about a year, year and a half later, um, my son was on a baseball um, team and I would just sat there watching game or practice and one of the dads was next to me and he's fully sleeved up and we got to talking and, and he's prior service he was a um a special forces uh corpsman doc ray um and just i don't know anybody military or even about any of that shit you feel more comfortable opening up to them even though I didn't get deployed, I got hurt and before my unit deployed and everything. But I don't know, I just, I feel more open to talk with people that were in the military. I told them about everything that was going on, just how I just was a ticking time bomb. And he told me that he got the SGB shot from Dr. Mulvaney up in Annapolis. And this was probably, I don't know, maybe six months prior to the the worst day of my life. And once again, I sit there and I think back and I should have just made the, God, I'm better than that. I should have just made the appointment. I should have made the appointment because knowing now, what that shot is capable of, it's, I cannot stress to everybody how much it is a game changer. I don't know why this shot isn't talked about, not for just for military, not for people with TBIs, for first responders, um, every, every, just, Everybody that has gone through some either severely traumatic either injury or um, scenario that is, it's, you can't get that monster out of your head or it just, it, it won't leave. I got the shot June 26th up in Annapolis, Maryland, Dakota Myers. Angel Foundation funded it and I I I still to this day cannot believe the effects of this shot so June 26 I got this shot um today is December 27th um so I just recently had it six months it'll be six months and one yeah yeah that's right I'm, I'm not good with math my mom says I'm special <laughs> but I literally went from every single day seeing red on somebody Somebody got it every day. I I apologize to everyone I've ever been just relentless to spinning venom, as I would say. I I I cannot say I'm sorry enough for either the pain I've caused people. It just. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry, but literally <sighs> close to, I'd say nine years of almost every day, somebody getting the wrath of Ryan to, I haven't, I haven't gotten mad one time. And Doc Ray told me that he got, he's had his shot for coming up on three years and he his exact words is bro I can't get myself fucking pissed if I even wanted to. I 
I he was he even told me he's tried to get himself to the point where he wanted to lose his shit because he kind of missed that feeling and part of me thought that the other day I was like man I kind of miss getting pissed off about stuff then I sat there and shook my head and I was literally no you don't I'm back to the way I was prior the brain injury um I I'm emotional on everything I mean I I'm an open book. When people ask me about anything, I will tell you everything about my struggles with stuff that's happened. And I, 98% of the time, I'll break down crying. Um, I go to therapy every week, twice a week, some weeks, and same group of people. I break down crying every, every time because I think back on how just ugly I was to people um, and one thing that anybody that knows me I was never a, a person of faith another a man of faith I mean the only time I went to church it was in boot camp because I wanted to get away from the drill instructors because anybody that's been there understands that it's brutal but um, past year, my former neighbor asked me to come to church with them that a lot of people in the neighborhood went to, Renovation Church in Hampstead. And I, I said, yeah, I'll go once, um, but don't count on me coming back again I'm just I'm just kind of forewarning you because I didn't I, w I wasn't raised I didn't go to church and stuff like that um but something about that that place man it the the people the pastors etc I mean I I loved it it spoke to me um not the way it does now, but it spoke to me. Um, I, we went every Sunday. Um, if we didn't go, we could watch it or listen to it online, etc. Um, but I started after it was three days before the shot or six days. Yeah. It was on my 39th birthday. I signed up to volunteer with the church to help build a wheelchair ramp for a a, uh, a man that was diagnosed. I, I can't remember what he was diagnosed with. He was a 28 year um, uh, sheriff, a, a cop, man. And anybody knows me, I support police like beyond I those they have the most underrated underappreciated underpaid job and they still go out there knowing the risks that they take that they could leave their loved ones forever over just the dumbest shit so I remember helping doing that and I remember leaving there and just the positivity of everybody there helping and just seeing how happy the man's wife was knowing she didn't have to help lug, lug him down into a wheelchair. I mean, it, it's intoxicating. It was a feeling that I, I truly loved and I, I want to surround myself with people like that. And I can't physically go to the church due to circumstances, but I, I'd i never miss a service on Sunday. A lot of times I'll listen to it 
both services while either at work or my Sundays in the summertime where I'll go for a 10, 15 mile ruck and I will just keep it in my ears and keep the positivity flowing into me. But I've also signed up and I'm a part of a, um, the MCG, I'm not hundred percent sure what it, that acronym is for, I don't know, maybe missionary Christian group, um, where I became a part of, and we meet every Sunday, um, at Mama Kim's, Miss K Mac and her amazing husband, Bob, and the rest of the, the group members there that are, I've been very open, um, open about with my situation and my struggles over the years. And her son is a, uh, a Marine Corps vet as well and deals with a lot of issues. But the positivity of these people, I mean, all the all the pastors, um, Pastor John, Joey, Jordan, Lenny, it just Pastor Jared. It's like I truly wish I would have accepted God into my life a long time ago. And the positivity that has came with being there then my job that I'm currently at after I was um, fired from Cisco after having a episode and venting to myself that a camera caught and they didn't like what I had to say and I was let go which that was February 22nd um, 2021 this year um, I, I jump all around. Sorry. I don't take Adderall or anything anymore. After that shot, I've weaned every medication now. and But I'm still a little scatterbrained. But um, I work f um, for DNL Trucking and... Everyone at this company... It's so positive. Christian based people. I mean, I think I've maybe cursed four times since I've had the job here since April. Um, everyone here is so positive and so helpful and so loving. And they've also got me to um, come to a men's Christian group on Wednesday nights here in Wilmington. And it's just. I was just always so negative and I once again going back to the shot it as soon as that needle the second one came out of my neck I it's like a giant fog that has been blinding me for all these years was lifted and all that weight of everything literally dissipated and to quote Dakota Meyer imagine basically your mind being in downtown New York in rush hour traffic and you're 15 minutes late to a meeting this you just your mind is in a whole nother place then after the shot, I'm in a back, I'm on a back country road with nowhere to be. Hey, that analogy is so spot on. I nothing gets to me. Nothing. Nothing bothers me anymore, except family stuff like that still makes me sad knowing with everything going on um I don't I don't get dark thoughts anymore I don't get 
anxiety. I, I don't, I don't get angry about anything. I don't even get irritable. I mean, there's been so many things that have happened that have, have been a true test to it where I, I kind of just giggle at it and I'm just like, well, it could be worse. It, there's no point of getting upset over that and then letting it ruin my day. Um, exercise is the biggest thing in my life that I, I would work before and I would, I wouldn't run, I wouldn't work out, um, any of that work was my exercise and that wasn't enough because it now if I if I go two days without running hiking lifting anything where I get a smoke session and smoke myself where literally I'm drenched in sweat I feel that depression monster so to speak um, come back and I, I hate that feeling. I don't like that feeling. And that is one of the, the biggest things that I've made in a regiment and now in my life. Um, I might have a beer or two. I wouldn't even say two. I'd say a beer, maybe a week. Um, I don't, I've kicked all the medicines out. Um, I take my testosterone that I've been prescribed and that has been a lifesaver too. Um, every Wednesday I inject that. Um, I just, I, I make sure that I get six to eight hours of sleep a night um, it, I like this version of me is so much better con compared to the irritable, verbally toxic, fat, just I was a terrible person. And one thing people have told me that they've noticed right off the bat is one, like how calm wise I am. Cause before you were, even if I wasn't on Adderall, you would think I was on an eight ball. I would literally be sitting there talking so fast and I would talk out the side of my mouth. That's something I never realized that I did until I had my boss for one and a couple friends bring right up. They're like, dude, I can actually understand you now. You're not a hundred. 50 mile an hour but I just I wish I would have talked about this a long time ago to everybody don't suffer in silence reach out I've had uh, a good portion of uh of people that were in my life, more or less, 86 me, here in the recent events in the past months, um, I'm not mad, I, it is what it is, nothing I can do can fix that, um, I know that wasn't me, and it things caused that that shouldn't have been caused knowing my previous medical history but all I can do is better myself every day for myself for my family just for <laughs> for life just to be a better person in life and I thank God every day that I was introduced to Doc Ray and he helped me 
get that shot. I know people that are suffering in silence and either keeping it from their family or not having maybe family members they even want to help, so to speak. But I'm always open to talk. Um, I'm always willing to meet up. If I have the time to do it, I'll sit down. I will talk with anybody. I'm just, I'm always here to listen. I'm always here to, always here to talk. Don't, too many people take their lives thinking that there's, there's not an answer. There's not, there's nothing they can do to help to rid this epidemic of suicide with, I mean, it's, it's a terrible thing and <sighs> holy crap, I've been doing this for an hour and six minutes. Jeez. <sighs> Once again, S G B go on YouTube. If you're friends with me on Facebook, Ryan Hughes, go to my page. I have it pinned to the very top and it has uh, a 60 minutes. It's like a 12 minute video talking about it. And the main doctor, Dr. Sean Melvaney, that was like the forefront of all this. Um, this has been around since 2008. I don't know why this isn't available at either every VA or even private facilities. Um, like I said, I went to Annapolis, Maryland and got mine done. And the guy I talked about in the very beginning, um, Jimmy Mize, anybody from the rank would know him. His dad is Santa Claus. Legit. Um, He's a violent, he's been doing volunteer firefighting and firefighter EMT since he was 14 years old. And the first, I posted his story the other day. Um, the first call he ever went to was a car wreck or a six year old girl died in his arms. And, and that was the first thing that really started his problems with mental illness and all the calls and stuff and he's been on and he, he messaged me asking me about the shot and everything and I sent him the information and they got back to him within like a couple days and said we needed to get you in here as soon as possible so he's actually getting the shot on December 30th and I I cannot wait to see how much this helps him. He's got a six year old boy and he has had many, many attempts and thoughts of taking his own life as well. And it's it's brutal to hear that from the other side. But anyways, <sighs> there's stop suffering in silence and reach out a lot of doctors are would say they're almost I've he told me his psychiatrist was almost against him going and getting this done because they just want to pop us full of pills. Medication, medication. Medication just ma it fixes it. It's a temporary fix. Um I'm not saying what the shot is a hundred percent fixed, but I'm six months in and I feel like the Ryan I was prior and the few people that have been around me and got to experience it 
they can attest. I mean, I'm, I am a completely different person. My kids, even, I asked them, do I seem different? And they nodded, yeah. And I said, how so? They said, you're not, you're not mad. You're not mad and screaming all the time now. It, that is the hardest pill to swallow, knowing that that is a, a prominent memory that stick with them knowing that I was just a monster and it's a terrible thing but I fixed that and and I'm flat out I'm hoping it lasts as long as Doc Ray's at three years right now and counting but the first moment I feel my old ways coming back um my ass making an appointment up there and I'm going up and get my double shot again and make sure I that venom never 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 comes back again because I like this life I like this feeling it's it's pretty awesome <laughs> so anyways um I'm I'm sure, I'm sure there's some stuff I miss, but I'm an open book. Um, anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out um, about anything, questions, ask. I don't care how personal you think it is. I'm an open book. So I'm not proud of stuff I did in the past, but I sure as hell that's never going to happen again. That's for damn sure. So anyways, an hour and 12 minutes. Crap. I need to go to sleep. So anyways, I love everyone. God bless. Have a good night and look out for your loved ones. If, if any spouses etc if you're dealing with anything like that if your person your love whatever is family member they're dealing with this from either a car accident it could be being deployed it could be anything being a cop firefighter emt etc or just something traumatic i'll talk to anybody about it um I've, I think the first week after I got that shot and I came out talking about it, I had probably over 30 people asking me about it and it's, it, it works. <laughs> it is, uh, it's an amazing feeling. So where people thought I was high because I'm this is how I am now. I'm calm and relaxed all the time. It's, it's a pretty damn good feeling. And I love it. So I love everybody. If I've, if I've done you wrong in the past, I'm truly sorry. Um, allow me to make amends. I'm truly sorry. That wasn't me. And I just, I've showed too many people close to me the, the best and worst and actually I can't say that now because this is the best I am I just I cannot stress that enough so anyways I love everyone love yourself be good to yourself exercise and listen to everything Joe Rogan says because it is like gospel it's right bye bye